Good evening. Back in 1900, one of the premier clubs of the area was the New York Yacht Club. And the New York Yacht Club decided the best racing was one design racing. All the boats the same thing. So they started building boats in the early 1900s. Their boats were measured by their waterline length. The very first boat that they built was a 70-footer called the New York 70. This progressed year after year for several years. Finally, in 1935, they decided that they better come up with a little smaller boat. They called it a New York 32, 45 feet long. And for the very first time, they selected a new architect, Sparkman and Stevens. Most of the boats before that had been done by Nat Hershoff. So in 35, they contracted with Henry Nevins to build 20 boats upside down on a fixture. When the boats were done, the fixture was destroyed. And on May 9th, 1936, Apache and Valencia, Valencia was the blue hulled one with the mast in place, and Apache didn't have her mast in place yet. She was the white hull boat. And they went into the water in 1936. Apache went on to Bermuda that year, finished second in her class in the Bermuda race. They only built 20 boats, and you had to be a member of the New York Yacht Club to own one. Over the years, 10 of those 20 migrated to the Great Lakes. Five of them were here in the in Detroit area at one time. We had Valencia, which was number one, named Goldbrick, Apache number two, we had Tigris number four, Vitesse number five, Falcon number six, Soubrette was down at the Little Club number 10, Sapphire, Tommy Hansen owned her first, and then the Neasley family for many years. And then Night Heron, she's down at Crescent Sail Yacht Club now. She's number 16. Number 18 was Gentian. She was at Bayview for many years, and then over in Chicago. And finally, number 19, Away. Then in 1938, Tommy Fisher bought it bought it from Buzz Havemeyer. Apache always had the name Apache and he kept the name. And he brought it here to Gross Point Yacht Club. And he raced her for three years and my dad was part of the crew. Well, the war was coming. Mrs. Fisher was quite worried about her son in college. Was worried about him getting drafted and everything. So she said, Toot, I want you to buy the boat. And he says, Mrs. Fisher, I can't afford that boat. And she says, under my terms, you can. We only have a few more payments to go. <laughs> so they sold the boat and brought it to Detroit Yacht Club and took it into well 65 and she's been there for 69 years. Traveled all over, but she's still in the same well. The price of the well has changed over the years, though. <laughs> 1942, that's when I came aboard. Look at those shoes, boy. <laughs> my dad, he, he probably killed me for that. But uh, my sister Nancy, my mom Ruth, um, I was the crew member. As you can see, I was too small. I couldn't trim a sail. I couldn't even hoist a sail. But I started sailing on the boat then. Um, during the war, um, 1942, you had to have large numbers on the boat. Coast Guard requirements were 36 inches high. If you had a small boat, that made quite a problem. <laughs> But we had the 38R502, which was the United States Coast Guard number, and we had it on the boat, as did all boats. You had to have them. And as you can see, look at that spinnaker. That was a cotton spinnaker. One of the reasons, once it got wet, 
you had to be very talented to lower that because otherwise you'd go up the spar. <laughs> it was heavy. But there were no synthetics at that time because if there was, they were using them for parachutes. We needed them for the war effort. Patchy went on to Mackinac Race. She won in 1941, first year that Dad had it. Won it again in 43. Won it again in 45. Then in 59. And then again in 61. This is a picture in the Black River. It's not quite so crowded then. Of course, that's one of the reasons it's a little easier to win the race, too. But that's a picture in the river, and you'll see two people on there. Jack Boyle, who just passed away just recently. He, was, uh, he sailed on the boat for many, many years. And you'll also see Johnny Rummel's picture in there. And Johnny Rummel is still out sailing today. You'll see him most every Sunday on the, on the river. In 1959, we won the Mackinac overall Class A. And uh, there's the Motley crew that we had on board. My brother and I, Doug, um, most of the fellas. This is when Doug and I started getting into racing the boat more ourselves. In 1961, we won Class A. Then we decided to take her down to Florida. This is... Um, Buffalo, New York. We took the boat through to Buffalo, pulled the spire out, went down through the barge canal, sailed it into the locks, or powered it into the locks, I should say. Um, on down out through the Hudson River, and on down to Fort Lauderdale. We appropriated a couple of signs on the way. <laughs> I hope there's some people that are not confused about making a turn on the highway, but they're on our dock box now. Once down in Florida, we raced the Southern Circuit. We did the Miami-Nassau race, the Cat Key race, the Lipton race. Last straw was down there from Detroit, and Tigris was down there from Detroit. Watch these stanchions go down there. Look at this. You put the tops of the stanchions under the water. That's what happens when you have a narrow boat. Um, but we sailed it down there, sailed all the races, and then back up to New York and back to Detroit in 1964. Uh, it was quite an interesting thing because those were the good hot boats in the Southern Circuit then, and we were one of two boats that had tillers. Everything was all wheels then. And it was just Tigris and Apache that had a tiller. You notice the foam, you can tell that she's racing in salt water. This was on the way to Nassau. But you see the foam around the hull when she's going fast and you're in salt water, she'll make a lot bigger wake and a lot bigger pattern in the water than here in the Great Lakes. Dad had a great reputation. He, uh, he sailed for many, many years did all the Saturday races. We all did the Saturday races in the 50s all the way through to the 70s. In a 15-year period, he won the DRYA championship 12 times, which was a record at that time. Um, then a lot of the, the rules started to change. The boat design started to change. And Apache wasn't as competitive. But we had a lot of fun racing her then. Uh, 1965, he was Commodore of the Detroit Yacht Club, and Apache was the flagship for that year. 1972, he sold the boat to Doug and I, my brother, for a nominal fee. And I had to loan my brother the ten bucks to pay for his half. <laughs> Dad retired and went down to Florida. Uh, in the winter of 85, with the help of Penny Breck, and actually the work of Penny Breck, she did most all of it, we started redoing the interior of Apache and get her looking fine, because in 86 she was going to have her 50th birthday, and we were going to race her to Mackinac for the last time. These are some of the shots down below. You can see the varnish. It looks just like a Steinway piano from the inside out. You'll see that drawer right there. 
uh, under the little seat that says Apache, you'll, we'll come back to that drawer. There's a little history there, but this is in the aft stateroom. This is the owner's stateroom and the dresser there. This was an 86 Mackinac. My dad sailing his very last Mackinac race. And my son, Stephen, who is here on the computer changing all the pictures, he raced his very first Mackinac race. Also, my other son, Ron Gemeiner here, he's in the room. He's, a, he's our alternate captain. We kind of retired Apache from racing in the, in the big major races, but we decided we'd always do the preems and do the off-the-dock races and the sweepstakes races and a lot of the point-to-point -point type of races, which we, we have done. There's my dad, my late brother Doug. Unfortunately, he, he never made his 50th birthday. And uh, he passed away early, and now the boat's twice as hard to varnish as it used to be. In fact, I, I finally figured it out. It isn't 45 feet long, it's 90 feet long, because I have to do both sides. In 2006, we went to Castine, Maine, and all the 32s, owners, former owners, all got there. We gathered for their 70th anniversary. And this was a thrill for me because Olin Stevens was there. And although I had met Rod Stevens several times, Olin Stevens is a person that I had never met. And I had the opportunity to sit and have dinner with him and thank him for designing a wonderful boat that's always brought us home. There's been some times I worried about that. <laughs> we had a shirt that we had set up for the occasion and we asked him to uh, sign the shirt and autograph it for us and we did and he did and at 98 years old he was quite a guy. We went out and we raced the 532's that were there. This is Gentian, she's the one that used to be at Bayview and in Chicago. This is Vitesse, number five, used to be at the Detroit Yacht Club and here at Gross Point Yacht Club for a while. And uh, Siren is number 20, and Falcon that was here for many years at Bayview, number six. And we raced them there and we had a good time, a lot of stories, and a lot of former owners enjoyed it. And it was quite a thrill to be with Owen. Now Apache's back at the DYC, and she's not raced as often. We do the off-the-dock races on Thursday night with her, but it's still pretty much more like an old horse, you know, staying closer to the barn. And uh, we keep her right there. <laughs> now we're back to the drawer. That's that drawer that I was showing you. That's my grandson, Teddy Gominer. That's Stephen's son. We had a tradition that the youngest child would always go out for sale, their very first sale. We'd open up the drawer. We'd put them in there, a couple of blankets underneath, and that way, if the boat healed one way or healed the other way, they were always safe. We didn't have to worry about it. But we always had a rule, too, that if they cried, we'd close the drawer. <laughs> Amy, Amy Gominer, Collins, uh, daughter recently was in there, Courtney. Charlie Gominer's been in there, Tommy Gominer. Stephen, you can't believe that he was in that drawer, but he was there. My son, Ron, he was in there and my brother Doug in 1945, he was in the drawer. I never made it in the drawer, I was too old. <laughs> it's a family affair, and every Sunday when you're out, and if you see that old Indian head up there on a sail, and you see it going along, there's one of the family on the boat, and we go out every Sunday, lots of Saturdays, lots of night sails and everything. The family keeps growing, and we have to kind of split up now, because if we took everybody out, I think it'd sink. <laughs> now here she is, that was off of Bayview Yacht Club. That was uh, one of the preems races we were racing. We haven't worn her out yet. And she is the bond, it's the glue that's held our family together. Everybody gets together, we all come over to the boat, at the picnic table in front of the boat. We have a great time with the old girl. Um, this is a shot that was just taken this last fall, top of a spar here. Um, 
can't get over it. Those sails actually are 1986. It pretty looks good when the sun's on them. But we're trying to make everything last a lot longer. And there she is. She's going off into the sunset. I thank you very much.